it was a bold move that no one saw coming. In late 2021, Mark Zuckerberg stood on a virtual stage, smiling in front of a digital landscape filled with floating avatars and 3D homes. The logo behind him said it all. Meta. Facebook was no more. In a single announcement, Zuckerberg attempted to change the trajectory of one of the most powerful tech companies in the world. And not just that. He tried to redefine the entire future of the Internet. He called it the Metaverse, a new, immersive, virtual universe where people could live, work, socialize, and even own property. But while Zuckerberg laid out his vision of a digital utopia, Elon Musk, the billionaire behind SpaceX, Tesla, and Neuralink, had a different reaction. He laughed. And not just laughed. Musk called the metaverse unconvincing, pointless, and a marketing buzzword. He compares strapping a screen to your face all day to something out of a bad sci-fi movie. So, what's really going on here? Is the metaverse the next internet revolution? Or a billion-dollar illusion? And why are two of the world's most influential tech giants on opposite sides of this digital war? Let's break it down. The story starts with a problem. Facebook, now Meta, was under pressure. Privacy scandals, declining user trust, political controversies, and competition from TikTok had all taken their toll. Zuckerberg needed a bold new direction. He found it in the metaverse. The idea wasn't new. Sci-fi novels and games like Second Life had toyed with the concept for years. But Meta had the money, the reach, and the infrastructure to make it real. Or at least try. Zuckerberg promised a world where you could build a digital home, work remotely with VR co-workers, go to concerts as an avatar, buy clothes and items as NFTs, earn money, own land, and live a second life, all on chain. He launched Horizon Worlds, pushed billions into VR and AR development, and began transitioning the entire company into a metaverse-first strategy. But not everyone was convinced. Enter Elon Musk. To Musk, the future isn't in escaping reality. It's in enhancing it. He believes the real breakthrough lies in merging humans with AI through Neuralink not putting them inside cartoon-like digital playgrounds. Musk's vision of the future is physical, biological, and mechanical, not virtual. And unlike Mita, Musk is deeply skeptical of centralized platforms. He has repeatedly warned against giving too much control to big tech. In fact, he said, I don't see someone strapping a friggin' screen to their face all day and not wanting to ever leave. That just seems depressing. But here's the thing. While Musk was dismissing Meta's vision, others were building a different kind of metaverse. And this version doesn't need Mark Zuckerberg at all. Enter Web3, the decentralized revolution. Instead of giant companies owning virtual worlds, platforms like Decentraland, The Sandbox, and Somnium Space let users own the land, control their data, and trade assets using blockchain technology. In these metaverses, land is bought and sold as NFTs. Players host concerts, art galleries, and games. Users earn crypto through play-to-earn mechanics. No corporation controls your identity or assets. And while Meta's Horizon Worlds was struggling to attract users, with less than 200,000 active users globally, decentralized metaverses were booming. Big brands like Nike, Adidas, and Gucci started launching digital stores inside these spaces. Snoop Dogg bought virtual land. JP Morgan opened a digital lounge. Suddenly, the idea of the metaverse didn't seem so far-fetched, just not Meta's version of it. So what's really going on? This isn't just a battle of technologies. 
it's a philosophical war. Zuckerberg wants to build a centralized, highly controlled metaverse, one where Meta owns the platform, data, and monetization systems. Web3 communities want an open source, decentralized world where ownership is on the blockchain and the rules are written by the users. And Musk, he's watching both sides and still not convinced. He believes real innovation will happen through brain-machine interfaces, augmented reality, and deep AI integration. He doesn't see value in digital avatars wandering through virtual malls. To him, the future is neural chips, not VR headsets. But let's not ignore what Zuckerberg is really after. He's not just trying to build a fun place to hang out. He's building a new economy, one where digital identity replaces physical ID, virtual assets have real-world value, jobs exist entirely online, and users spend more time in the metaverse than in reality. It's about owning the rails of the next internet. Think about it. If Meta controls the metaverse, it can control everything. Identity, commerce, communication, entertainment, education. That's more powerful than owning social media. That's owning human interaction itself.